Well, thank you very much, General. As one X to another, I salute you. Uh, I have learned something at this banquet table. Uh, I have learned that uh, people who live in glass houses shouldn't get stoned, <laughs> take baths in the daytime, or uh, become the honored guest at a testimonial banquet of the God, family, and country rally. I learned that the hard way this year, uh, last year, I mean, and the easy way this year. Uh, I am empathetic with my dear friends here in the face of all these accolades. I had a beautiful tribute lined up with the aid of ever so many researchers, and then that scoundrel Griffin gets up here and pulls the rug completely out from under me, <laughs> leaves me naked to the truth, which I dare not speak. Uh, nevertheless, let me say briefly, beginning where the cake leaves off, <laughs> that uh, Dan and I, I have a good many things in common that haven't been mentioned. Uh, none of the things, you know, the muscle and all that, don't get me wrong. Uh, but uh, we both are ex-members of the FBI. Now, you know, of course, all about his wonderful career with the FBI. Uh, mine was short. And by the way, I was the charter member of my branch of it. My FBI meant fired by Ike. <laughs> That's where the, uh, the uh, consanguinity began between Smoot and myself, the kindred interests that we have. Uh, then again, for uh, many years, every week, under the sponsorship of Dr. Ross's pet food, uh, Dan and I were back to back in uh, more than a hundred radio and television programs through the uh, patriotic uh, insight of uh, our late lamented friend D.B. Lewis. Uh, D.B., as Dan well knows, a very practical, forthright fellow. He made no bones about why he wanted me on the, the Dan Smoot program, because Dan was there before I was. He wanted me to back it up, he said, to come after Smoot had appeared, because, he says, I can get better spots for Dan if I buy 30 minutes at a time. <laughs> and I ought to have something else to fill up the 30 minutes. And so uh, I think the manual form would be the proper thing to have, don't you? And looking hungrily for every possible inch of exposure I could get anywhere, I said, D.B., it was a stroke of genius. <laughs> As, and so it was, back to back, week after week. But in those days, I very seldom saw Dan face to face. Uh, we were doing various things in various parts of the country, and our association then was uh, very close. However, it anteceded that. We had things in common long before we appeared on radio and television together. As a matter of fact, Dan, we occupied a chair together. Do you remember? Not merely a radio program. We co-chaired a thing called For America. Uh, this went back to the first hours of the Eisenhower administration when all of the Taft Republicans were having weep-ins <laughs> periodically, you remember? And uh, at the instigation and at the, with the endowment of the distinguished and honorable and revered uh, uh, Colonel Robert R. McCormick, we started an organization called For America. And uh, it not only had one chairman, it had two, uh, Dan Smoot and uh, Clarence Mannion. Uh, so we, uh, we squired that organization together for a long time many, many interesting experiences. We appeared together on another memorable occasion, Dan, uh, back in 1956, uh, when uh, For America filed its uh, most resounding bolt 
by launching T. Coleman Andrews as a candidate for President of the United States. This was a gesture of pure defiance uh, for which we both were renowned. Uh, however, I shall never forget that warm October night. We waited until October to nominate Coleman because we wanted to give uh, Ike a chance to get a good start on his second term. You see, we didn't want to take any advantage of him. Our candidate was infinitely better. And, uh, but we got on the ballot in eight states and polled more than a million votes. Uh, and incidentally, that night in Richmond when we launched his candidacy, Dan and myself and some other slightly less eloquent contributors, uh, Edward P. Morgan paid us the compliment of covering the dinner personally. And he referred to it on the air sometime afterwards as the most intelligent and eloquent oratorical program that had been presented by either party up to that time in the campaign, and by that time it was almost over. Uh, Dan had never run into that compliment until I reminded him of it yesterday. But uh, when... Uh, when uh, Edward P. Morgan pays that kind of a tribute to a conservative performance, why, it almost rates as high as a desecration by uh, Bill Buckley, don't you think? <laughs> I, uh, I uh, remember that and, uh, and cherish it uh, very much. But the serious part of Dan's accomplishment has been uh, made, of course, far and apart from any association with me. The Dan Smoot Report has become the Bible of the conservative movement. Uh, Dan's remarkable story, which was recited here tonight, a story of persistence in virtuous dedication to his God and to his country and to his family, the magnificent manner in which he vaulted over insuperable difficulties, these things are all true and all very moving. Uh, the real place where Mr. Griffin floored me was in his casual disclosure of the fact that we were uh, uh, honoring not the guest of honor that we thought we were, because Dan Smoot is not Dan Smoot, really. He's Mr. Howard Drummond Smoot. Uh, can you imagine that? I can. Because, uh, you see, before somebody kindly nicknamed me Pat, I was Clarence Emmett Mannion, no less. Uh, my mother used to refer to me all the time as Clarence Emmett, not just Clarence, but Clarence Emmett. And then for some reason, I've never found out exactly why, uh, some charitable person fastened on me the name of Pat, uh, going so far back now that the memory of man runneth not to the contrary. Many, many more things here, many, many of them repetitious, but uh, the time has come for us to eat the real meat of this magnificent banquet and to see this lovely, handsome fellow who is uh, the believed and beloved beacon of the conservative movement in the United States, my friend, compatriot, back-to-back -back associate, Dan Smoot. Dan, welcome to the <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.